Welcome to the Warframe Railjack Easy Mode Solo Farming Guide. And I know what you're thinking, subscribers. Theodon, what are you doing making a Warframe video? Aren't you the single player action RPG guy? And indeed I am. And to you Warframe out players out there who have never heard of me, I know you're thinking, who is this guy and why should I even listen to him? I'm going to answer both of those questions. And the fact is, I play Warframe and I enjoy it. And I am really enjoying the Railjack content. And you can see my beautiful Railjack up there, up top. This video is not telling you how to farm the mats so you can build your Railjack. It's what to do with your Railjack after you've built it. And the reason I'm making this video and why I decided to create a solo player video for what is meant to be group content, so don't even say it in the comments, is because the matchmaking system isn't all that great right now and people are still learning the content including me and I found that the groups that were joining failed quite a bit on the missions uh, so I decided to kind of go out and get good and figure out what was going on and then share that knowledge with all of you hopefully you find this video helpful um, I'll tell you how to just farm solo the first mission so that you can upgrade your railjack which starts out incredibly weak and only useful as a taxi to get into the missions after you farm those materials you'll be able to upgrade it as much as you want uh, assuming you can get the the parts and the guns and whatnot and the avionics and that'll make it easier for you to do the other missions down the road now, in order to do this as quickly and easily as possible, I'm relying on Limbo and Amisha. Why Limbo? Because Limbo has a pretty good sprint speed, which affects your archwing uh, speed as well and maneuverability. Now, Goss is actually faster, but Limbo also has very good abilities for sort of keeping things lock down on your ship in case you get boarded. So if you do get boarded, you can just do stasis and cataclysm and then go take out any of the enemies on board the ship. You also get to enter in the rift just by dodging. Uh, and that lets you board the cruise ships, the enemy cruise ships, and take out the reactor without any difficulty at all. And then you can get back to defending your ship. Now, this works on the very first mission. I'm not sure if it would work on later missions. Uh, where things will probably have more health and you'll take more damage. Um, but you can farm that first mission as much as you want um, in order to upgrade. Now with Amisha, the reason why we're running it is because of the abilities that you get with that Archwing as well. So as you can see, Vengeful Rush will allow you to regain energy as you get attacked and it also boosts your abilities. That is helpful for a benevolent decoy, which you can put around your the entirety of your railjack to defend it, and you can also use Warding Grace to slow down the enemy fighters so that you can take them out. So that's an incredibly useful uh, archwing to use for this mission. I wish there was a way in railjack to swap over to another um, archwing after you've actually beaten the mission or if you want to during mid-mission. I don't see that happening. Otherwise, I would really like to use Itzel for after you've taken out all the enemies and you're just farming stuff. But that's okay. Amisha works well enough. Uh, and with Limbo, you're moving around pretty quickly. Um, all in all, you'll have 1.35 sprint speed. So you're doing, you're doing quite well with this combination. Now, getting into the actual mods, uh, I am modding Limbo for range and duration with a little bit better efficiency. That will let you uh, cast Stasis and Cataclysm and lock down your whole ship. Uh, for the and you can use whatever weapons you want here too. Archaplasmor just does a lot of damage really quickly, so it's good for knocking out the reactor. Static Core is good for a charged attack to take out the enemies um, all at once, and Redeemer Prime also is good for attacking stuff uh, if you need to do more damage, which you don't need to do on this first mission. Um, for the mods, whoops, not that one, that one. For the mods, uh, you can see I slotted Steel Charge to get me up to a capacity of 78. Got Cutting Drift to add to the ability range. Streamline is my ability efficiency. I'm increasing duration with Prime Continuity and Augur Message. Uh, reach is being further extended with Augur Reach over Extended and Stretch. And then I've got Umbral Intensify so I don't have horrible power strength 
although it's not really needed for this build, and I get a little bit more out of um, Roll Vitality to give me more health. Now, for Amisha, the mods that you want to slot are Argon Plating, Superior Defenses, System Reroute, Hyperion Thrusters for a little bit more um, Sprint Speed, Energy Amplifier for more range on your abilities, and more duration with an efficient transferal, Enhanced durability for more health, and Prime Morphic Transfer if you have it for more ability strength. Um, eventually I'll max out all of these, but uh, for now this is all I can afford with the Endo. Same thing with the Limbo, just short on Embo to max them out. The combination of these two is really effective for soloing the first Archwing mission, or the first Railjack mission. So with that, why don't we get right into it? And as you will have seen, perhaps, once you get your Railjack, you are now able to board your Railjack directly from your orbiter through that hatch there. So let's go ahead and do it. And here we are on board the Railjack, and look at how beautiful they have made space. This is magnificent. Unbelievable. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pick our mission. And the only mission that we're going to want to do if we just want to farm for now is deposit cluster that's the first one it's the easiest one once i upgrade my railjack i'll try soloing these and if i do maybe i'll make videos on those too uh, however we're just going to do the positive cluster for now it's the easiest we'll stick with this we're on our way now i can pilot the ship but i don't want to do that instead want to wait to come out of hyperspace. Now that I'm out of hyperspace, Here in sector. Let's use my energizing that. dash. Incoming attack craft. out. Crew, light them up. Dropping Tenno out of airlock. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm trying to get my energy up on Amesha so that I can use my abilities. And we're just going to wait for the first fighters to come in. And that should be able to um, let us regenerate our energy once they get here. You're going to want to bring up your map too so that you have your tactical view there. Um, particularly when you're running through the ships, you're going to want to know where things are. So here they come. I've got some energy now. So I can go ahead and pop my abilities to protect my ship. And to go out and kill them, so I've slowed them as I'm coming in. That makes it easier for me to kill them. Then I can turn off my slow, go back to my ship. Don't worry about getting loot yet. Just want to take out the fighters. That's all you're doing. Alert. Enemy crew ship has translated into the sector. Alright, now, you've got your uh, cruise ship coming in, so you want to defend your um, ship again. Maybe, you know, take out some fighters on the way if you can, but really you're trying to get to the cruise ship as quickly as possible. get in here. Just send yourself into the rift. Take out that. And get back out of the ship. And before you exit the ship, once again, use your energizing dash. you're going to go back to your railjack and protect it. Oh, if you die, it's no big deal. Just arrive. Crew ship down. That clears up some space. Fighters on attack vector. Gunners, fire at will. Alert. Enemy crew ship on scope. Alright, I've got my uh, energy back. 
so I will protect my ship. Waiting for the second cruise ship. Have maintained pressure. Well, there's the. No, oh, it's just a fighter. Oh no, that is the cruise ship. Okay, so hop into the cruise ship and do what you did last time. You want to make sure that if you get any uh, catastrophic uh, failures, that you go in and repair them uh, with at least 30 seconds left on the timer. Um, otherwise, at this point, you can just focus on taking out all of the fighters. Again, don't worry about loot yet, you'll do that after you've got all of the fighters down. Hop back into my ship. Welcome back. Use my energizing dash and go back. Ateno has exited the railjack. And I'm just ignoring the fires and everything for now. No need to worry about them. We have four fighters that we can take out first. Wait for those guys to come in. Hopefully I'll get hit a bit so I can get my uh, energy up. And I'm gonna go back up and make sure that that is on my ship. Fighters neutralized. Enemy infrastructure neutralized. Filing mission as complete. Alright, so then you're going to want to go back into your ship, and now you will take care of any of the fires and electrical damage and all of that. Oh. Didn't realize I had guys on my ship. Let's take out the guys on the ship. is up here. And you see you get your health and everything back as you're preparing me, so don't don't stress it too much. You just wanna Never seen the ice on the door before. And we got a electricity damage here. The electrical hazards grounded. Take the fire out so it stops doing damage. Flames extinguished. See breach. The 
Compression levels stabilizing. There Ruptures sealed. Good as new. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is be sure that you stock up on um, your munitions and everything. Make sure that you're full. You can do that here. So I use some Rebelite, so I'll go ahead and get that back. So I'm stocked up on munitions, I'm stocked up on Revelite, uh, so I've got everything that I need basically for now. Now I can go out and farm. I'm not going to show you farming the whole map because that would take hours, but instead I'm just going to show you a few pointers for how you can farm efficiently. Now you should be okay at this point. Um, to go ahead and drive your ship around, you might run into some hidden um, cannons. If you do, you should be able to take them out fairly easily. Uh, but I find that it's, again, easier to farm stuff in your railjack, or in your archwing, rather. So I'm going to pop out, and we're going to start picking up all of the stuff that dropped during that. As you see, stuff doesn't go anywhere in space, unless it's got momentum, in which case you better catch it quick. But, for these, you should be able to just pick them up, look for the glowing objects all over in the distance. Um, you do get a notification on the minimap there. Uh, but we're basically just going to try and pick up all of the stuff that dropped as we were going around and fighting those guys, right? see there's loot everywhere so just look for those kind of faintly glowing objects in the distance and go and collect them all. Fighting. Nope, one more. And the interesting thing, and I mean, God, look at this gorgeous view. And it's cool too because, like, there's a sense of motion above the planet. The clouds are moving. The rocks. It's amazing. The asteroids. orbiting the Earth right now, and that is just so cool. Where was I? Oh yeah, farming. Um, so a couple of tips with farming. It's kind of useful to hop out like this in your archwing and use your ship as a point of reference, so it's easier for you to figure out where you've been. Because it can be a little disorienting, you know, flying around in space, you don't know what's up or down. Uh, you can view the planet as down, it helps as a point of reference as well. Um, but when you're cruising around these asteroids, and I'll do it here in a second, it can be a little confusing. So it helps to be outside your ship. You get about the same amount of loot anyway. Um, and you're going to want to look for objects like this that you can destroy. There you go, you got some loot. You can also destroy um, some of the smaller asteroids like that. Sometimes they will have loot in them too. And also, sometimes if you fly through the holes in the asteroids like this, you'll get other loot as well. I'm not sure why that is, but on occasion I have noticed that I've got loot by flying through. <clears throat> Don't always go for the big objects right away. Kind of look for asteroids out on the side too. Um, and you'll see later, I'll tell you what, show you why, um, hopefully we'll get some, but there will be little red glowing beacons out here that have loot if you destroy them. Um, 
looks like we didn't get any on this map. Or maybe we did. I don't know. No, these ones just have loot. Uh, another form of loot container are these. Right here, so those will have loot in them too. And you want to get close before you kill stuff. Uh, for the simple reason that when you do blow things up in space, they tend to have a little bit of momentum, and you might lose them as you're chasing them around. So look for any objects like that. Go ahead and destroy them. These guys, these guys. Got some more down here. Now you can destroy them from inside your ship, um, totally fine if you want to do that, that way it does have a bigger vacuum mechanic, um, but I find being able to kind of cruise around like this, view things from all the angles, um, helps make sure you're not missing anything. And you kind of want to just systematically explore one set of objects after another. And you'll see as you're doing this um, that usually you'll have one group of objects together separated by some space next to another group of objects. So I'm in one cluster of asteroids now. And you're just looking for objects that you can destroy. So look for these guys. any objects you haven't picked up. everything from all the angles to make sure you're not missing anything because stuff will hide behind asteroids and whatnot. These usually have a cluster of objects around them, so kind of float around, pick up your loot, sure you've gotten it all and then get close to this thing and blow it up to get more loot. Now you can see on my radar there's an offensive turret over here, cannon battery. You can take these out with your archwing or you can go ahead and take them out um, with your ship. Either way, up to you. They usually drop some loot. If you're having difficulty keeping your railjack alive from those cannons, just go ahead and put the archery like that. Uh, I didn't talk about my limbo archwing weapon, I just used Larkspear. Um, Syngas is probably better. Uh, but, you know, use whatever you feel comfortable with. There are lots of good weapons. Should be effective with just about any. cleared out this field of objects, I think. Not seeing any more glowies. There's a couple down here. See, like that, those millstones that I just got, I got through from flying through the middle of that thing. I don't know where they came from, but got it. Just checking. I 
think we did all of this. We did all of that. I'm gonna check around this object a little bit more. I'll go back out and get that bit. You can see there's space between this debris field and the next debris field, right? That's what I was talking about. So you've got this big group of objects here, um, including this thing. So I'll go check that out fast. And then you get some space in between, and then you get your next group of objects. And I'll tell you why that's important. Makes sense in a minute. I think I have not. Did I clear this one out? Yeah, I cleared this one out, so I need to clear that one out. Sometimes some of this stuff is destructible too. You might as well go ahead and kill it. Hope you get something good. wish I had the option to switch to Itzel for this. It would make things go so much faster, but Itzel is just a less effective frame for actually playing defense on your Railjack, so you might as well go ahead and stick with Amisha. Wish I could swap to another Archwing, but oh well, maybe that'll be a feature later as they I think we've cleared out this entire debris field. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our railjack, keeping a lookout just in case there are any other glowing objects, which there are. So again, viewing it from a different angle, you often get more loot. Do not want to do navigation yet. What do you want to do? You just cleared out this whole debris field. So you're going to want to move your ship to the next debris field. And sometimes you pick up stuff along the way as you're flying through. You can see I'm slow. Best way to beat Railjack is to not use your Railjack, I find that funny. Alright, so I think we've cleared out this debris field now. Not seeing anything else. Alright, 
So, this is now heading over to the next one. See, they just keep going off in the distance. As you clear this one, you'll have the next one, the next one. There's usually about four, so I'm not going to clear all of them on this video. That'd be a waste of your time. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go ahead and check this area out really quick and get into position for the next one. So, what I'd like to do is position my ship facing the way that I need to go to get more loot. So you can see we've got this next debris field here. I could exit my ship now and use it as a point of reference. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly through this debris field to the next open area, which is right over here facing the next debris field, drop my ship here, and use it as a point of reference while I go back out and clear the debris field that's behind Hello me. Deployed. So that's facing forward where I need to go next for progression. This is the debris field that I haven't cleared yet. And so I will proceed through and clear all of this out. And that's basically how, it, how it's done. You can go ahead and farm all of the materials in these areas. Use your ship if you want, use your archwing if you want. I find it's easier to have this your ship as a point of reference so that you know uh, what areas that you've cleared and which ones you haven't. Because space can be a little disorienting. So I'm gonna pause the video here. And as you can see, we've got a lot of rewards to collect. So I've done fairly well. Uh, getting materials, upgrades for my ship, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to show you how to end the mission and collect those rewards, and I'm going to show you refining as well before uh, I end this episode. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to farm all of this, and we'll come back after I've gathered all of the loot in this area, and we'll show you what I've got. So we'll see you back, and I'll end the video at that point. Another object that you can destroy is are these guys. Um, so you see them kind of flying around. Not sure what they're doing out here, but they are loot. Off in the distance there, you can see the little red beacons that I was talking about. Uh, keep an eye out for those. They're usually off to the side away from one of the bigger uh, groups of objects and debris fields. Um, so you can see them out here. Uh, each of these has to do. Just be kind of blinking. Like little Christmas ornaments for you to get your Christmas blankets. Cool tie cheer. Again, try and look at things from multiple angles because um, when you're viewing things from one angle, a lot of times you'll miss objects that are flashing from one side and not the other. Just go over there. We got all of the objects for that. So. It's just like a little one off to the side. You might not notice it as you were clearing uh, all of the objects that you're in the midst of the debris field. So be sure to kind of look out into space like that uh, and just see if anything is flashing red. Go out and get your loot. You can go ahead and destroy some of the objects on these bases uh, if you want, but I haven't found any loot from destroying any of these. Um, some of the bases do have tunnels that have loot inside of them. Um, then if I find one of those later I'll show you. Uh, otherwise, destroying those vents creates another point of reference for you so you can see the flames spewing from 
quite a ways away. I destroyed that one over there uh, already, but as you destroy these, you can sort of say, okay, I went over there already. So they are useful for that perspective. So here's one of the objects, or one of the bases, the asteroid bases that you can destroy. It has a tunnel, so you can actually go through this tunnel. You cannot go into the hatch, unfortunately. Fun. Um, but oftentimes when you go through those, there's a little bit of loot inside. Um, so, you can start with the so you can pick that up. You also find some of these floating around sometimes. Um, I'm not sure why, but when I attack the top of it here, every once in a while, I get some loot. But, if you want to destroy it, shoot it in the middle like that, and you should be richly rewarded. And here is another object that you can destroy. You'll notice it's a bit different than the other crates. Got a separate crate floating next to it, but it is indeed destroyed. we go. I have cleared the level and gotten all of the loot that I can get. I think we might have missed a few here or there, but this is the end of the stage. No more debris fields for me to explore. So on that note, all you have to do to collect your loot is to go to navigation. But before you do that, what you're going to want to do so you're going to want to come down to your area here with the crafting. And before you head out, double check to make sure that you're topped up on munitions and everything like that. And then click Refine. So that'll send all of these materials to you and your team. Case, it's just all going to you. And you should get a bonus for those materials, and then you can stock up again next time. Um, you can leave them there if you want to, uh, but keep in mind, uh, doing so, uh, you don't get as much as good of use out of the resources that way. So then, to end the mission, we just uh, go to navigation, go to dry dock. That should complete the mission. Let's see what we got. So we got a thousand bus trolls and cubic diodes for completing it. We also got the non engines. Isos, some Kesslers, lots of asteroids, Brestles, so on and so forth. 4,000 titanium, a bunch of cubic diodes, more pustules and carbides. So we did pretty well. Now, obviously, you see the mission time over here, 2 hours and 41 minutes. It doesn't actually take that long. I had the AFK for a good long time in there, and I didn't want to lose rewards. Uh, should take you less than an hour to farm everything if you're quick about it. Um, but all in all, you do pretty well and you can solo it. So I hope that was helpful and that you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, do uh, let me know if you'd like to see any other content um, or if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them.